Hey everyone. Now in this video, I'm going to start looking at the Linux system and particularly the interface to the command line of it. But before I get too far into that, we're going to have a bit of a history lesson here because some of the things that come up on this are for historical reasons. So I'll just go through a few of those. Now back in the early days, and I mean the early days like over 100 years ago, they had a thing called a teletype. Now a teletype is a machine that uh, you can input signals via a keyboard and transmit them along some kind of uh, comms line and they would print out at the other end through an actual printer. So you'd print um, whatever was typed at the other end and you know went across the line so it was a teletype. And uh, that gets abbreviated to TTY okay which I'll mention again soon. So that was a teletype, but there was no computer, of course. It was just a simple messaging system over a transmission line. Now, years and years later, we started to get computers. But in the early days of computing, they were big, massive mainframes, okay? So just really big computers, nothing like, like this here. And to control them, they were controlled by a machine which was similar in effect to the teletype. It was, a, it was basically, it had no computing. It was just called a dumb terminal. And it just provided a means to uh, enter using a keyboard, putting in, um, you know, commands into the computer, and then reading signals back from the computer onto a screen. So it was similar to the teletype in effect, except that this time you're communicating with a mainframe computer. So I mentioned that because that teletype got abbreviated to TTY, and that t those letters are still in use today, as I'll show you soon. Okay, so I want to talk about the actual interface to the computer. So I'm going to start with the word console. Now, if you think about what a console is, you might have seen, you know, if you've worked in networking before, you'll see console uh, ports on switches and routers and things, and you might talk about the console on the computer, but just the very word console doesn't necessarily mean something to do with computers. It could be like if you're a train driver and you've got all your controls in front of you, that's your console. That's where you work. That's your interface to the machines that you're controlling, okay? That's your console. If you're a crane operator, that's your console with all the controls and all that. So the console to the computer is how you control the computer. And on a computer, we call it a shell. Okay, so you might have heard of that word, a shell as well. Now, we have the shell and we have different types of shells, but the, we have a user interface. Some way to interface with the computer is the user interface, which gets called a UI. Now, an interface like this, where you've got you know keyboard, mouse, and pretty things on the screen, that's that's called a graphical user interface, okay? So Windows is a, a graphical user interface, or GUI, or a GUI. Another version of a graphical user interface is a web user interface. Like when we looked at Proxmox, we controlled it through a web page. That's a web UI, so it's a web user interface. And we have another one called a command line interface, which is where you actually type commands. Now, I just mentioned a minute ago about the dumb terminals that they had to control mainframes back in the early days. Okay, just sent commands and got info back but didn't have any processing power of its own. Well, those, those dumb terminals, we now have emulators that act like them on the computer system, and that's just called terminal. It's a terminal emulator. So what I'm going to do is start one up on uh, Debian Linux here. Just go up there, Activities, down to our Applications, and under Utilities we see terminal. Okay, so it's called terminal. Just double click that, control shift plus a couple of times so we can all see it. And that brings up our terminal emulator on here. Obviously, it's just communicating with the actual operating system itself. But that's where the terminology comes from for terminal because it's a terminal emulator from the old dumb terminals that used to control computers. So that's our CLI, that's our command line interface. We'll just run commands and get the output straight back on the screen there. Okay, so they're the methods of uh, communicating with the computer here. So what I'm going to do is focus on the command line interface and just go through a couple of Linux commands. Now, the first one I just showed you there was list. Okay, so we, we're in a directory. A directory is like what you might call a folder, but they're called directories. And when you log in, you usually start in your home directory. And that's indicated generally by this little symbol here, the tilde. Okay, so we're in that directory and we can list, as I said, files that are in it. Now, if I want to see what directory I'm in, you can just do the PWD, which is the present working directory, and it'll tell you. So we're in a directory called slash home slash CWNE88. Okay, now that's great, but we want to see what else is around there so we can navigate up a directory and into other directories. So to go to a directory above, so the higher level one here is just that slash home, just use dot dot. 
Now, cd means change directory, simple as that. So change directory dot dot means go up one, okay? So you can see now it's written it out slash home, that's the directory we were in. And you can do it again, present working directory, yep, slash home. So if I go up one again, cd dot dot, again, takes me up a directory. Now we're just in slash by itself, which is called the root directory. There is no high directory, that's where everything starts. So if I list what's in there, Everything's in there. Everything to run this operating system and all your files and all that sort of thing. So CD and LS are by far the most common commands that I use anyway, and probably you will too. So we'll just brush on a few more that will be common that I think you'll use, and we'll build up over time and get more into them as we go along. So we're, we're here. So if we want to go to a directory, we want to go to um, CD. We want to change directory, and we want to go to dev. Just do it like that, and you can see, slash dev, okay? Check it again, there you go, we're in the dev directory. Now the dev directory contains a lot of devices, which I mentioned when I talked about the uh, USB drives in the earlier videos, all the stuff's in here. So if I do a list in here, you see lots of things there, okay? You see CD-ROM, you see oh, DVD, you see standard in, standard out, which I'll get back to, and you see a lot of these TTY. Now remember I said uh, teletype was um, abbreviated to TTY? Well that still comes into use in, in this day too for processes that are running on here. They run in a TTY session and that's why I've got all these um, TTYs in there. So that's interesting that that's there. And if you're using a Windows system and if you've ever connected to a Linux system to, to use a CLI from a Windows machine across a network, you've probably used a program called PuTTY. And if you look at the way the letters are stylized, the TTY at the end are capitalized, okay? And another thing, the uh, terminal, you can all these terminal emulation options here. Um, I won't go into them now, but you've got line feed and carriage return, like the old typewriter days they come from, where you had to actually move the carriage once you finished at the end of the line and then feed it to the next line. That's your line feed. We've got other things here, like the keyboard options. Uh, look at this, you've got the VT100 plus here as an option. Now, that was one of the types of dumb terminals that were around back in the day, so... That's where all this stuff comes from. So anyway, there's some devices. Now, if you want to go back to your home directory, just do CD by itself with no, nothing after it, and you'll go back to your home directory. So present working directory, home CWNE88. Okay, so there's a couple of simple things. Now, I've shown in, in the past how you uh, copy a file and copy it across a network, but um, let's say we just want to make a really simple file, okay, just with some text. What it can do is you can use a command called echo. Echo just as it sounds, echoes what you uh, type. So if I type that, CW88. Um, this channel is tops, right? Okay, now that just echoes it to the screen because that standard in that I spoke of before, that device for standard in is, is my typing and the standard out is the screen. So that's what it's doing. It's just, I'm typing this here, echo CW88, that's my in, and when I press enter, the out is the screen. Now we can direct that elsewhere. So what I'll do now is instead of letting it go to the screen, what I'll do is I'll put this little redirect, okay? This, that little arrow there means we're gonna send it somewhere else. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send it to a file. I'm going to create a file and put that text CWNE88 into it. So if I um, just call it some new file, right? You can see it didn't echo it to the screen that time. It made, well, we think it made a new file. So if I list now, you can see that there's a, uh, a file just got made in there, okay? So that's great. If we want to read that file, a simple way to do it is with the command more. I just use more. Some new file. Now I don't have to type the whole thing. I only have to type enough for it to be not ambiguous with any other file name and I can just press tab. So get used to pressing tab a lot. It makes things a lot quick and easier. So if I do more, some new file, there's the contents of that file, which is the text that we echoed into it before. Okay, so that's there, but let's say we don't want it there. We want to um, move it somewhere else, or let's say we just want to rename it. To rename a file is the same as move, and the command for move is mv. So if I move some new file to some other file, enter that, and do a list, that's effectively done a name change. It's moved it from there to 
Same directory, just a new name. Okay, now if I want to move it into one of these other directories like documents there, you can do the same thing. Move some other file, just press tab, as I said, and I want to move it to documents, so I have to type DOC enough for it to know that I don't mean downloads because nothing else starts with DOC, so it'll, if I press tab it'll just fill it into documents and press enter. Okay, so that's popped it into documents there. Now if I do a list where I currently am, you see it's disappeared, but if I go into by change directory documents and list that, it's in there. Okay. There's another way to do that. If I just go back, cd dot dot, which takes me up a directory, back to where we are, pwd. These commands are free, by the way, so feel free to use them all the time. You don't have to be shy. I run pwd all the time, okay? So we're in there, and um, our file we know is in the documents directory, but I don't really want to go in there to list it. So what I can do is list the documents directory and it'll show me what's in it from where I am. And if I'm anywhere else in the system, um, the documents directory, like if I go CD documents and do the present working directory, we see it's full path here, okay? There's the full path of that documents directory. So if I'm CD slash, I'm right at the top, you know, I'm up here where I'm nowhere near that directory. I can still do an LS, but I have to write the whole thing, slash home, CW88, documents and there's the file. Okay, so list is a big one, move, oh, and copy. So I'll go to that directory by simply going CD, just gets me home, as you can see by the, the tilde there, CD documents, and there's my file. Now, I might want to copy that. So to copy it, just CP. And this takes two arguments, one is the original file and one's your copy. So copy some other file to, let's call it copy of the file. Okay, and list that, so you've got two files there now. You want to check the contents, more, copy of the new file, still contains the same text. So we've got copy, we've got uh, move, we created it by echoing into a file with the redirect, instead of standard out we put it into a file, and to remove it, to delete the file, we remove, um, just check what's in here, ls, we want to rm some other file, okay, that removes it. See, gone. RM copy, done. CD home, done. All good, all nice and clean. Now we've made a file, we've moved a file, we've renamed a file, we've copied a file. Um, one thing I haven't done is make a directory. So in here, you can see there's our existing directories. If you want to make a directory, it's just mkdir. So make a directory. New directory. Okay. List it again. And there it is. Okay. So you can change directory into it now, cd new, di, new directory. And there's our directory. And to delete it, let's say remove it, like we remove a file, which means delete, um, we rmdir, so remove directory, um, the directory I created. And now it's gone. So that's it. I mean, that's not it. That's not even close to it. But there's a few things to get you started and get poking around. So you can copy stuff, move stuff, rename stuff, navigate your way around. And you can do other things, like instead of just ls, which lists you know, the files there, and as I said, we can um, put a bit of text into some file, okay? So now we've got a file there, more, some file, beautiful. Instead of just listing like that, you can list and then put a dash L for long. Now you get a long list. And as you can see, it makes it a bit clearer. Um, you see the size, you see the owner and the group, and the D over here means it's a directory, and that's not a directory because that's that's our file. So just press up to go to your previous command. L gives you a long long listing. Now this size over here, it's not very clear. I mean, it's in bytes, okay? But when you have big files, it can be hard to um, really understand how big they are. Like if I look in the uh, videos directory and list that long, you'll see this number here, but it's not that easy to read. So what we can do is put an H there for human readable. And there you go, it's 5.6 megabytes, which is a lot easier to read. Now, another thing I commonly do is um, show by, sort in order of size, with this capital S, and which well, is only two there, so that's not a good show of it. But another one is by time. So you can see the time that I did it. Over there, 2005, 2004. 
But yet another one is an R as well for reverse. It reverses the order of what we're doing. So that'll show the other way around. And that can be handy if you've got lots of files. You want to list them in order of time. Or you might want to list them in order of um, size. Size reverse. Size non-reverse. That sort of thing. Now, there is a command that tells you what a command can do. And it's called the manual. Now, believe it or not, it's called man. So if you do man and any command chances are it'll have some info for you. So if you just do a man ls, you get uh, a big document to uh, tell you all about what ls does. And those little things I put on the end there will, will come up in here, like h for human readable. Okay? Um, oops, wrong button. L, L would be the long, the long that I showed you, the long format. Now this manual page, or all of them, are controlled in the same way as more, where you can just press enter, to show the next line, space to go by a page, and you can use B to go back a page. Okay, so space and B, or enter if you just want a line, and then just Q to quit, okay? So I'm gonna leave that there for now, but as I do commands in the future, if I do something new, I'll go through it at the time, but just wanted to give you enough to start poking around and having a look for yourself. So you've got the man pages, just type man anything. If you wanna know about copy, man CP. Okay, it'll tell you all about copying and all the things you can do with copying. Um, what else did I do? Man, make dir to make a directory. There you go. Tells you all about that. So, you know, dash p is a good one. If you want to make a directory and another directory and a few directories in one go, do a dash p and then you can do them all in one go. Things like that. The manuals can be a bit hard to read sometimes to make sense of, but they're good reference there if you need to do something. But I think that'll do for now. I don't want to overwhelm you. So until next time, just take it easy, all right?